Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to another Eternal Contenders video series. So today I got a, a nice twist on uh, one of our latest favorites for you. Um, it's a different spin on the whole um, Blade Midrange aggressive deck. So today i uh gonna show you my uh, different take on the archetype that I have been messing around with a bunch and had similar success as with the original, so let's take a look. Okay, so this is basically um, Combrano Plate, as I called it, or FTJ uh, Plate, depending on what you prefer. So the idea to this uh, take came from the rise of Hailstorm and uh, wanting to like make the deck a bit better against Control and a bit better against Hailstorm specifically. Which is why the Whirling Duels initially were uh, Auric Record Keepers. So the deck has 8-3 drops that it can uh, easily deploy proactively into a Hailstorm without being 2 for one with a 2-3 and three drop. And Student <clears throat> also usually only is Hailstormable for a short period of time. So if you go Hailstorm into like a Seraph, the opponent basically has to kill the student, even potentially with Hailstorm if that's his only option to get rid of it, because the turn after student threatens to become a 4-4 four, four, and then you have two 4 health units and the opponent has a useless Hailstorm. So that's a pretty nice upside. Another upside is that the deck is a bit better against control arguably, because you get stand together, which is really good against sweepers in general, especially harsh rule. And another upside of uh, time over primal here is the fact that the influence becomes better. <clears throat> Since um, all the time cards only require single um, single time, unlike Shelter Wing Rider, which requires double primal on turn 4. So that's a pretty big difference, given that the deck is already kind of pushed in terms of its color requirements. So gaining um, better influence is a pretty big deal. Shelter Wing Rider has the issue of occasionally just sitting in your hand waiting for the second primal to show up because you can only play so many primal sources and here we get to run the same amount of time sources but um, only need one so we can basically play all our time cards all the time no pun intended um, without having them sit in our hand waiting for uh, one of them to be playable that's a pretty big deal and I also managed to sneak an additional sigil in the power base to make the power base a little smoother and a little less depleted. <coughs> so that's um, that's it for the nice improvements. Let's talk about the rest of the deck. So basically, the structure of the deck is still the same. We have Torch and Vanquish as removal. No more permafrost, but by the end I was only running like two permafrost and three vanquish. So we arguably lose one removal, but that's not that big of a deal. Awakened student replaces Cathon here, but provides similar feature to the deck, being um, a really high impact two drop that blocks well against aggressive decks, at least from turn three on, and scales well into the late game. Does so differently than Cathan and is a worse top deck later on than Cathan, but it's also much more powerful early on. Like if you drop a student on turn 2, that's one of the best things you can do in the game in terms of units early. We still have Champion of Glory, then Seraph basically replaces Vadius, which is arguably a downgrade, but we get um, some Overwhelm to combine with Hammer of Might. Together with Stand Together, she also uh, triggers Commando, while Vadius does so um, even without help, so that's a bit of a downgrade. The ultimate costs one more than Vadius, but um, is more powerful. It doesn't happen that often, but when it happens, um, it's really powerful, and Seraph can sometimes randomly win the game on her own in the late game for you. Even if it doesn't happen often, it's a nice thing to have around. Then we still have Commando and Enforcer, and currently even Duo, because outside of Hailstorm, Concerns Duo is just so much better than Record Keeper that I eventually went back to Duo, and so far it has been playing well, and uh, other people that I gave the list to that played it also 
uh, gave me a resounding duo over Record Keeper, even with Hailstorm. So unless you see a ton of Hailstorm, just don't worry too much. <clears throat> and Copper Hall Elite replaces Sheltering Rider, which on the surface might seem like a downgrade, but um, the more I played with the card, I actually like sort of like it more than Sheltering Rider, even though it dies to Runehammer, which is pretty annoying. But the big deal is it's an actual two for one. Like the the opponent really has to deal with the card twice, while with Sheltering Rider, the opponent has to just break the Aegis and then in terms of offense at least, without a weapon, uh, shuts down the card completely. While Copper Hall Elite, especially for reactive decks, needs to be handled twice. Otherwise the Elite just keeps hitting them for four. It's not like you can just uh, Varus favor it or whatever and then you can ignore it for uh, the foreseeable future. That doesn't work here. That has been uh, pretty relevant and impressive. So I uh, feel like Elite is arguably even a slight upgrade over Sheltering Rider, especially given the fact that it's so much easier on the influence of the deck. And yeah, Hammer of Might and <coughs> Plate are still the same in the same amount. We also still have 25 power plus 4 seek. No big differences here. And then we have the three stand together um, as kind of a unique gain from time um, that before were like another removal and to protect and this is a lot better than protect uh, than protect since the nerf in a deck like this and yeah just provides the deck some additional power and punch it it's a bit similar to additional weapons without having the downsides of weapons and uh, yeah being a pain for reactive decks yeah i really like this deck i've been doing pretty well with it i played it for like 120 track games plus a bunch of untracked games, and I'm close to 62% win rate over the 120 games. Uh, with the other played deck, I'm at like 63 to 64 over like a bit more than 200 games, but um, I also had a bit of a downstreak variance with this deck lately, so um, it is very possible that come the 200 plus games that the decks will be within like 1% of each other like this is very well within variance, so it's very possible that the decks are very equal in performance and power level. I just have like a couple of different features and upsides and downsides. Um, I couldn't really decide yet which version I like better since they both feel good and do well. It, I definitely like how much smoother this version feels and how, how much nicer Elite is but losing something like Vadius um, and Cathan is also definitely noticeable, so there are some trade-offs here, so it's hard to uh, decide in the end. A power base is very similar to the uh, power base of the other deck, basically with one more sigil, um, and it's equally carefully crafted. And yeah, <clears throat> that's really all I can say about the list. As usual, I'm gonna take it to rank the bunch, um, Body of mine that I gave it to, a friend of Patrick's and mine, um, took this deck from I think like around 400s to like rank 20 something and the last day of the season, last season, but then he had a bit of a, a bad streak because he didn't stop, played a bit more and ended up in like 150 or something, unfortunately. But yeah, he, he was really crushing and cruising with the deck and was loving it. So other people succeeding with the list as well, not just me. All right. So, time to hop into some games. Stay tuned for game one, coming up next. <laughs> 